Hey everyone, this week we're going to be looking at Affinity Photo and seeing just how good it is at editing raw image files. If you've seen any of my other post-processing videos before, you'll know that I usually use Lightroom and a little bit of Photoshop, but there's loads of other software out there. And today we're going to be looking at Affinity Photo. I've got one of my raw files and we're going to see what the program can do with it. Now, there are different modules within Affinity, what they call personas. So you have the photo persona, which is a bit more like Photoshop, where you can manipulate pixels and use different layers and blending modes, and you can clone things and stuff like that. But what we want to concentrate on is the develop persona, because it's specifically designed for editing raw files. So I'm not covering anything else, it's just gonna be the develop persona I've got my file, so let's jump in and have a look what the program can do. So this is an unedited raw image captured at Winnet's Pass in the Peak District. I made a video of that morning and I'll put a link up top if you haven't seen that and you want to go back and watch it. So when you bring a raw file into Affinity, it will automatically bring it up in the developed persona. So we have other personas such as the photo persona here, or liquify, we've got tone mapping and export personas. But we want the developed persona, which is this one here. And that will lay out our panels and sliders so that it's optimized for editing raw images. So on the right hand side here, we've got a number of tabs, basic lens, details, tones and overlays. And inside each of these tabs, you've got a number of sliders which we'll use to edit our image. Exposure is the top panel. So in here we've got exposure, which is, we all know what exposure does. It brings up the shadows and highlights and overall exposure of the image. So I'm not gonna change that one too much. I think it's fairly well exposed already. Might just bring it to just around about there, I think. Black point, we can compensate uh, for bringing up the shadows too much. So if we've really brought up the, the overall exposure and then we want to bring some of the blackness back into our shadow areas, we can bring up the black point to compensate. But I'm gonna just bring that back to where it was. You can reset these sliders just by double clicking them to their original starting point. I'm gonna leave black point where it is Brightness, again, self-explanatory, just brings up the overall brightness of the image or brings it down if you bring it to the left. I'm gonna leave it where it is again. In the Enhance panel, we've got Contrast. Contrast will bring up the, the difference between the dark and the light areas in the image. So if we go to the left, there'll be less difference. If we go to the right, there'll be more difference between the dark and light areas. So I'm just gonna bring that to about 4%. Clarity is perceived sharpness. So it works a little bit like it does in Lightroom. If you bring this to the right, it will enhance edges by basically highlighting them. We can see here at the top of the image, we've got a highlighted area just above the top of the mountain there against the sky. And that's already highlighted slightly just from the, the sunlight coming over the top there. But when we raise the clarity, you see that becomes turbocharged basically. It becomes so much more highlighted. And that just adds a bit of perceived clarity to that edge. But you don't want to overdo this effect. So I'm going to bring that down to around about 10%. Saturation is the richness and boldness of the colors in the image. So if we bring that up, you see it emphasizes the yellow color. If we bring it to the left, we get rid of that color and it makes it more black and white until we get all the way to the left hand side and it is black and white. I'm gonna leave that, I'm probably gonna bring it down slightly and about minus 15 because in a moment, I'm gonna raise the color temperature by using the white balance and I'm gonna do some split toning which we'll come on to. And so I don't want it to become oversaturated and too garish. So by bringing that down to about minus 15, that'll help to stop that happening. 
Vibrance is similar to saturation, it will alter the saturation of colours but it's more localised and it will preserve some colours. It's useful for if you're working with skin tones, it'll preserve your skin tones but still bring up the, the overall saturation. Now I'm going to tick white balance here. If the title of the palette is not ticked, it won't be activated and you won't get the slider options for that particular panel. So I'm just going to tick white balance there and now we have temperature and tint and I'm going to bring up the temperature because the morning was quite warm, we had the golden hour sunlight coming over the hilltops and it was really warm but the raw file by itself doesn't really show that so we have to bring up the temperature just to get that colour back in there and it has given it a little bit of a green tint now so to compensate for that, we can bring the tint slider to the right. If we go to the left, it will make it more green. But I'm going to come to the right and just add a little bit of purple in there. And the next one down is shadows and highlights. So we have the shadow and highlight sliders down here. And if you're familiar with Lightroom, you'll know that they're usually grouped up here with the exposure sliders. But in Affinity, they're down here. However, they work in much the same way. If we raise the shadows, it brings up the black areas, or we can make those darker by coming to the left, and highlights works in the same way. Bringing it to the left will bring down the highlights, bringing it to the right will bring them up. I'm not gonna play with those too much. I'll probably bring that up to about four on the shadows, and I think about 14 on highlights is okay. Okay, so the next tab along is Lens. In here, we can do things like compensate for distortion. So if you're using a wide angle lens or a fisheye, which has got quite a lot of distortion, you can compensate for that and correct it so the image looks right, basically. But we don't need to do that with this image, so I can untick that. Chromatic aberration, if there's any fringing in your image, purple edges, green edges that have been caused by your lens. It will be automatically removed if there's a lens profile. And you've got a defringe set in here as well. So again, any kind of fringing around the edges, you can remove that manually. You can remove a vignette if your lens has caused a darker area around the edges of your image. And you can also add a vignette by using post crop vignette. So I quite like to use that function just to darken the edges and draw the viewer's eye into my image. But I'll usually do that at the end. Next tab along is details. So in here we have things like sharpening, which is called detail refinement. We can bring up the radius, which is basically the thickness of the sharpened highlighted area. And the amount is how strong that effect is perceivable within the image. I'm not going to do that, I don't need to sharpen this image, I don't think. Noise reduction works, again, much the same way as Lightroom. Bringing up the luminance slider will reduce noise and grain in your image. And the details slider will try and preserve some of the details. The luminance contribution is kind of like a blend slider, so it's how much the effect uh, is applied overall to your image. And colours and colours contribution will be the, the colour noise within the image. But again, this image was taken at ISO 64. There's basically no noise in the image, so I'm going to untick that. And if for any reason you wanted to add some noise, perhaps you've got a street shot, you want a kind of gritty, noisy look, you can add some noise using noise addition. Okay, so the next tab along is tones. In here we've got curves, black and white, and split toning. I'm going to use curves just to add a little bit more contrast to my image. So bringing this line here to the right or the bottom right will darken tones and bringing it up to the top left will highlight or brighten highlights, I should say. And we can add different points in here. So I can put a point down here and I can add a point here and bring that up more to the top left like that. And this is a basic S-curve, which just adds a little bit of contrast to the image. 
black and white, self-explanatory, makes your image black and white, and then you get the sliders within that panel, which you can adjust just to change the luminosity of that particular colour in your image. I'm not going to be using black and white for this one. I am going to be using split tone in there. So in Lightroom, you have the ability to change the hue and saturation and luminosity of individual colours. You don't have that in Affinity, but you can use split tone in to change the highlight and shadow hue. So I'm going to set my highlights hue to a brightish yellow and then bring up the saturation like so. I'm going to make my shadow hue a reddish orange and I'm going to bring up the saturation of that. And that's really adding some warmth and colour and saturation to the image and that's why earlier I said I was going to bring down the overall saturation because I didn't want it to go too crazy. And here we've got a balance slider. Basically bringing that to the left will introduce more of the highlights and if you bring it to the right it'll give more bias to the shadows. I think it's looking best around about there. Okay, so at this point it'll be good to talk about some of the icons and functions we have along the top here. So this group of blue and white icons here are what we use to compare the image with the original. So I can click on this middle one here, split, and that will show a before and after split pane view. So this is before our original raw image, and this is afterwards. So it's quite useful to see the difference like that. And we can use this one as well, which is mirror, and see them side by side. And this group here is quite useful as well. It will basically just highlight any areas which are where the shadows are too black or the highlights are too white, where they're basically burnt out and clipping. So you don't want that, it's just going to create solid white or solid black areas. And having this one selected will show any clipped highlights, and this one will show any clipped shadows. It's not showing at the moment, my image must be okay, but areas which are clipped will come up as a area of colour. So I think it's blue for the shadows, you'll end up with blue patches, and I think it's red for the highlights. Okay, finally we'll go to the overlays panel. Now if you're familiar with Lightroom, you'll know that you can use selective masks to edit an area of your image locally without affecting the overall image. And you can do a similar thing in Affinity, and they call that overlays. If we use the gradient tool, which is just here on the left hand palette, if I set that to radial, I can draw out an area just down here. And then any changes I make will only affect that area. So for example, I can bring up the exposure. I can bring detail back in the shadow areas. Alter the black point, just to get a little bit more detail back in, in that darker area. But it won't affect the rest of my image which is good, that's what I want. So if I go back to my overlays palette, I can see that gradient overlay there. If I click on master, that'll take me back to my master layer. And now any changes I make will affect the overall image again. So we're more or less there with the final image. I'm just gonna bring the highlights down a little bit. They're a little bit strong in the sky. I've got too much of a bright white line above the hilltop there. That's from some of the clarity effects that I used earlier. But I do like the clarity which is down here in this area. So what I'm going to do is go back to the overlays. I'm going to add another overlay. I'm going to use the brush tool this time. Hardness on zero. And I'm just going to make that slightly bigger. And just paint along that top area there. And now, if I go back to basic, 
can bring down the highlights, maybe bring down the exposure as well. And I'm going to go back to master now. One final thing I'm going to do is go into lens, post crop vignette, and I'm going to turn up the intensity, or bring down the intensity rather. I'm going to turn up the hardness just so I can see what I'm doing. So we can see the vignette there. Change the scale, bring down the hardness, and then bring back down the intensity just so the effect's not too strong. And I think that's more or less my final image. So if we go back to the split pane view, we can see the difference. That's before and that's afterwards. And I think that's looking much better. And one final thing we have to do with Affinity, which we don't do in Lightroom, when we've finished our edit, we go up here to the top left and click Develop. And that will bring the image automatically into Affinity's Photo Persona. And this is more like Photoshop, where we can edit pixels, clone bits in and out, things, all the kind of stuff you would do in Photoshop, basically. So that can be quite useful. So that's the Develop Persona in Affinity Photo. Is it any good? Yes, I think it's pretty good. Is it up there with Lightroom? I'm not quite sure. It doesn't have all of the sliders and controls that you might find in Lightroom. I would like to see dedicated sliders for hue, saturation and luminosity for individual colours. That's something I use a lot and is missing from Affinity. I'm also not quite sure about how it works with having to develop your image at the end. So within Lightroom you can edit your image and it saves all of those parameters and you can come out of Lightroom and go back to it and then keep adjusting. Whereas in Affinity you use your sliders, edit your image and then you have to commit at the end to develop that image and you can't go back and change it from there, you would have to start again. So I'm not quite sure about that feature. And of course you don't get all of the cataloging and library functions that you do with Lightroom. However, when you consider the cost, here in the UK you can get Affinity for around about £48, which is about the same as five months subscribing to the Lightroom and Photoshop package with Adobe. So you know, you can make your choice. If you need all of the Adobe packages like I do, perhaps you need to stick with that. But if you do just need a good raw image editor, as well as a lot of other functionality in there as well, like I said, it has different personas and it will do a lot of what Photoshop does, for example, but that's for another video. If that's all you need, then Affinity is a very good value package. and I definitely recommend it. So that's about it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really do appreciate it. If you found the video useful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up just down below. And if you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button, or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. Until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.